Could the Saints sign a veteran offensive tackle? And why I think Trevor Penning is actually developing nicely, contrary to what other Saints fans are saying on social media. And to cap things off, we're going to be talking about some New England Patriots injury news. Welcome into today's show, Saints fans. It's your boy, Trace Gerard. We're here. We're ready to go and we're ready to talk some Saints football. And speaking of this New England Patriots versus Saints matchup in week five, I have a goal of getting to 21,000 subscribers before kickoff that day. So if you guys help me out here, we are 186 subs away from 21,000. If that happens before Sunday, 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 I'm going to be dressed to the nines, looking fresh, looking real good. I'm going to wear a suit to the watch party, hosting the game day watch party. So if you want to see me dressed up, dressing fresh and looking clean, I suggest that you subscribe, lock us in. And without further ado, let's talk some Saints football. All right, the veteran offensive tackle that we're discussing the potential to join the New Orleans Saints roster is Dennis Kelly, who recently was uh, released by the Philadelphia Eagles from their practice squad. And why we're talking about it is because a lot of fans and a lot of people on social media are saying, hey, Trevor Penning, he's not that good. He's not playing well. He's playing bad. He's, you know, he's, he's a problem. He's a liability on the offensive line. I actually kind of disagree with that because when you look at the PFF numbers, from Dennis Kelly in 2022 when he played with the Indianapolis Colts and Trevor Penning thus far in 2023, the snap count is actually pretty close. 240 for Dennis Kelly in all of the 2022 season, 268 through week four for Penning. So the sack number, obviously Penning has led up three sacks, not ideal, but the run blocking grade, 53.0, not the best in the world. The pass blocking grade is better than Dennis Kelly at 63.4, and his overall grade is at a 59.2. But just some backstory and some information on Dennis Kelly, if you're unfamiliar who he is. He was a 2012 fifth-round pick by Philadelphia, and he's also played with the Tennessee Titans, the Green Bay Packers, and the Indianapolis Colts. And as I said earlier, he was released from the Eagles practice squad back in August, and sure, he's a very experienced player. I mean, he's been in the league for 10. If he gets signed, 11 years at this point. But he isn't on a roster for a reason. I don't think he's that great. At best, he's a backup option. And like I said earlier, I think Trevor Penning is actually playing really well. This past week, in week four, it was an ugly game for New Orleans. But Trevor Penning was one of the few bright sides. He was actually the highest graded offensive player, according to PFF, for New Orleans. And he was the second highest graded player on the entire roster in week four. And look at these PFF grades. I mean, sure, in week, through weeks one through four, his overall grade is at a 59.2. But in week four, he put up an 82.1 overall grade. The pass block grade is 63.4, but it was better in week four at a 68.8. And the run block grade, a 53.0. Look at that, a 91.0 in week four. So I think that Penning is actually coming together really well. He's getting better every week. And with a project player like that, you have to continuously see improvement. And that's what we're getting with number 70. So you tell me, Saints fans, what are your thoughts on Trevor Penning thus far in his Saints career? Has it been good? Has it been bad? Or are you kind of in the middle and you think it's, well, it's a work in progress? I think he hasn't been amazing, but he's better than I originally I thought. So let me know, Saints fans. Take advantage of the ad break that's going to be placed right here and share your thoughts. Don't click out of the video. All right, so I honestly believe that the issue for the offensive line, it's less on the tackles. I think Ryan Ramchek, Trevor Penning, they're playing not amazing, but they're playing better than the interior because Cesar Ruiz, Eric McCoy, James Hurst, their PFF numbers are atrocious. James Hurst, a 48.0, is absolutely disgusting. Eric McCoy, a 66.6, he should be playing a lot better. Cesar Ruiz would be on this list as well. However, he is out for a handful of weeks due to a concussion. So Andrus Pete is filling in for Cesar Ruiz. You know, if you had Cesar Ruiz in as well, Pete would be, or Ruiz would be the right guard. Hurst at the left guard, which would take Pete out of the lineup, obviously. So, Andrews Pete at a 54.1, not ideal. We talked about Penning. Ryan Ramchek, 
is a set just under a 70 overall, 69.9. Very nice PFF grade. But the sack counter is where I'm really upset here. 15 total sacks on Derek Carr this year. Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill, whoever is in that quarterback. The quarterback has been sacked 15 total times. And that's four times in week one, four times in week two, four times in week three, and three times in week four. So, I mean, I guess it's gotten better. Like, four sacks is a heck of a lot worse than three sacks, but it's still not good. And not just with the pass game, but with the running game. The offensive line, the interior has to be better. The holy trinity for the New Orleans Saints backfield, it is incredibly talented on paper. Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, Kendra Miller, they are great football players, but they have not had the opportunity to show their incredible talent. I mean, Jamal Williams, he led the league in rushing touchdowns last year. He hasn't even found the uh, end zone this season. Alvin Kamara in one game back, 11 carries, 51 yards. Kendra Miller in a very limited role, 10 carries for 37 yards. It's not been good. And coming up, I have some more takes I want to talk about on the offense and as the offensive Line, Pete Carmichael, all of that. I want to discuss the offensive uh, production because it's just been so bad. And then we also have to get into some major Patriots injury news, like I said, off the top. But before we get to that, I have to say thank you so much to Game Time for sponsoring today's video and making today's Saints Now possible. Guys, I cannot express to you how awesome this app is. Do you hate missing out on your favorite live events? Well, just this month, Game Time helped me go to so many live events. It's helped me get floor seats for Zach Bryan. I got tickets to Arkansas versus A&M at Jerry World in the club level. And I bought Dallas Stars tickets for me and my girlfriend. And I wouldn't have been able to get tickets for all of these events if it weren't for my favorite ticketing app, Game Time. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of event. And even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last minute seats Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. And with game time, you get a guarantee, which means you will always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. And one of my favorite parts about this app is how user-friendly it is. I mean, you can literally see what your seats will be for. And this is picture is for the Jags at Saints Thursday night football. I mean, you can get some really good deals on seats right now. I mean, 45 bucks for a Saints game Thursday night football? Come on now, that's free money. And then on top of that, when you pick your seat, you can take your phone out and you can like do a little of this motion. You can move around and see, what's my point of view? Do I have a pillar in the way? Is the scoreboard right above me? Am I going to have a fan who has a big sign and it's going to be super annoying? I love Game Time. It's an awesome app. Once again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code SAINTSCHAT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code S A I N T S. C-H-A-T for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so back to getting to some football talk. My biggest issue with the offense, it's a multitude of things. It's not just the fact that the play calling has been dull. It's not the fact that the execution has been very, very poor. But there's also been a really sloppy play. And honestly, seems like there's a lack of chemistry in the offensive unit. And that is a huge problem for me because this offense has talented weapons at every position. And the fact that they aren't getting 20, 30 points a game is absolutely disgraceful. I mean, they're one of the lower scoring offenses, it feels like, in the league right now. And they are so boring to watch. And once again, I have to say it, fire Pete Carmichael. The offense is outdated. This is not just a sample size of four games. This is a sample size that, do, that goes as far back as last season. The offense has looked very dull and very boring. There's been no excitement. There hasn't been any electricity around it. There hasn't been the juice that it needs or that the offense typically has when it was in the Drew Brees era that could continue to keep this team winning. It has been bad since last year. I think that Pete Carmichael needs to go. And if you want some offensive coordinator candidates, I broke it down in yesterday's video, so I highly recommend you check that out after today's video. So, guys, if you want the Saints offense to get hot, let's get the good juju going. 
Let's get some good mojo going around the New Orleans Saints offense. And type who that in the comment section right now because I want this offense to get going, and I know you at home want the offense to get red hot as well. All right, so to cap things off, I want to talk about some Patriots injury news that's actually pretty impactful for the Week 5 matchup for the Saints and the Patriots. So Adam Schefter pointing out that Matthew Judon, one of the top pass rushers for New England, will undergo surgery on his torn bicep on Wednesday per source. He wants to try to come back and play again this year, but there are questions about whether or about whether he can or will. Either way, he's out indefinitely. And Matthew Judon is a very, very good football player. I mean, this season so far, 13 tackles, five tackles for a loss, four sacks, and nine quarterback hits. The guy is an absolute menace when it comes to wrecking the backfield. And I have to say this, thank goodness. I'm not one to root for injuries, but thank goodness the Saints offensive line does not have to go up against Matthew Judon because I quite frankly think that he could have two or three sacks against the Saints offensive line if he was playing. Of course, we never wish for injuries. We wish for a speedy recovery for Matt, uh, Matthew Judon. That being said, thank God the Saints aren't playing against him. And then another injury update to get to, Christian Gonzalez. If you guys saw the hit that he had against the Cowboys, his shoulder, it did not look good. And he's likely going to be out. He's going to be out this week. And Christian Gonzalez is a very talented player. He was the Patriots' first-round draft pick out of Oregon this past season, uh, or in this past NFL draft. 17 tackles, a sack, three pass breakups, and an interception. He's versatile, he's scrappy, and he's very, very talented. And my point of bringing all of this up is the Saints have to capitalize here. The Saints cannot let another bad injury for another team go to waste. And what I mean by that is you can't let this team not take advantage and capitalize where the, other, uh, uh, the opponent has weaknesses. And I'm going to be honest, the Saints offense and the Saints defense has been horrendous at capitalizing on weaknesses and injuries for your opposing team. I mean, let's think back to the Packers game. No Christian Watson, no Jair Alexander, no, I mean, like, and you still couldn't do anything. And then when he played week two, no DJ Chark. That was a problem. This past week, the Buccaneers were without some of their really uh, talented defensive players, and you still were not able to capitalize there. The Saints have to take advantage of where the opponent has weaknesses, and that is what is going to lead to wins because clearly the offense isn't going to do it, so you got to capitalize where there's injuries on the opposing side. Again, not rooting for injuries, but it's a key to victory, and you got to take advantage of it. So I want to go ahead and invite you, Saints fans, to our watch party on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Kickoff is at noon. We will be live 30 minutes, maybe even an hour beforehand. Who knows? But that's why you need to turn on your notifications because the second we go live, you will get notified on your phone, on your laptop, that we are live and that you need to join us. But if you do plan on joining our live watch party for our audience interaction, pregame, tailgate, live play-by-play, a lot of fun stuff to go through this week. Type me, and I'll give a shout-out to five people who are joining us this week in tomorrow's video. As always, Saints fans, y'all stay golden. See you next time.